Hey, and welcome to this tutorial on Accounts and Transfers with Pact. The goal of this tutorial is to help you build an application that transfers value between two accounts. You'll build a smart contract that implements this functionality named Simple Payments. Throughout this tutorial, I'll go over the following topics. First, I'll overview the project and help you get set up in your environment. From there, we'll build the smart contract using the modules and key sets, schema and table definitions, functions, and table creation. We'll then use this code to create accounts and make payments between users. By the end, you'll be set up to implement accounts and transfers in your smart contracts. So let's get started with the project overview. Before getting into the application, take a look at this image. This provides a summary of each of the features you'll create for the simple payment smart contract. As you can see, you'll create a payments module including three functions, create account, get balance, and pay. These functions will store data on a payments table, which manages payments between two accounts, Sarah and James. Now that you have a basic idea of the requirements, you can start building this project for yourself. I'll work on this tutorial locally, then paste it into the online editor later on to run and deploy. To get started, choose a project directory and clone the project supporting resources into your local environment. Change into the payments directory to begin working on this project. Finally, open this directory in Atom to see the provided files. As you'll see, there's a few separate folders available to you. You have the Start folder, which provides a starting point with all the comments for every challenge. You have the Challenges folder, which breaks out all the challenges into their own separate files. You have the Finish folder, which includes all the comments and code for the final application. And you have the Payments folder, which holds the final application without the challenge comments. Each of these options are meant to help support you as you work through the challenges. Feel free to use them however you'd like. And if you're ready, let's get started. The first step is to set up the module and key sets for the smart contract. To do that, I'll define and read the admin key set, create the payments module, and give the admin key set access to the module. So first, I'll define key set, admin key set, then I'll read the key set, admin key set. After that, I'll create the module, name it Payments, and give access to the admin key set. After writing that, the module and key sets are set up, and we're ready to start building the logic within the module. The next step is to define the schema and table for the smart contract. For that, we'll use the Payments table. It'll keep track of the balance of the accounts and associate that to the account's key set. That looks like this. As you can see, the Payments table has two fields. There's balance, which has a field type of decimal, and key set, which has a field type of key set. Using this, we can define the schema for payments. I'll type def schema payments, write balance as decimal, and key set as type key set. After this, I'll define the payments table using the schema that we just created. This is done using def table, followed by the name payments table, and a reference to the schema payments. That's all we needed for now for schemas and tables, and we're ready to move on to the contract functions. This smart contract will have three functions, create account, get balance, and pay. Each of these are essential functions to allow users to manage their accounts. First, I'll add a function that allows the administrator to create accounts. To create this function, there's a few things we'll need to keep in mind. One is that we need to enforce that the key set is an admin key set. We'll also want to enforce that the initial balance of the account created is greater than zero. And afterwards, we'll want to make sure that this new account is added to the payments table with both its initial balance and its key set. So with that in mind, let's write this function now. First, I'll define a function named create account with parameters ID, initial balance, and key set. Next, we'll use the built-in function enforce key set to ensure that the account is being created by the administrator. If you're unfamiliar with enforce key set, what this is doing is checking that it's the admin key set that's calling this function. If it's not, the rest of the function will fail to run. After writing this, we'll use enforce to ensure that there's an initial balance of greater than zero being passed in at the time the account is created. To do this, I can write enforce greater than or equal to initial balance of zero. If the administrator doesn't pass in an initial balance of greater than zero, they'll receive this message here. Finally, once the account is created, 
I'll insert the initial balance and the key set into the payments table. This can be done using insert at payments table at the ID passed in by the administrator. We'll set balance equal to the initial balance and key set equal to key set. At this point, we finish the create account function. Now that users can create accounts, it's important to be able to view the balance of these accounts. In this case, we'll allow both users and administrators to view the balance. We'll create a function named getBalance. Important things to keep in mind for this function is that we'll need to be able to read from the payments table we just created and restrict access to just the admin or the owner of the account. So with that in mind, let's write the function. First, I'll define a function named getBalance that takes an argument of ID. This ID is what's going to allow us to pick a specific user from the payments table. Knowing that, we can use with read to view the ID from the payments table. After getting the information from the payments table, we'll have both the balance and key set of the user. We'll bind the value of the balance and key set of the given ID to variables named balance and key set. Binding these values to variables allows us to use them however we like throughout the rest of the function. We'll work with these again soon. First, let's check that the key set of the user calling the function is either the admin key set or the key set of the provided ID. We can do that using enforce1. I'll type enforce1 and a message of access denied to be returned to users that don't meet the requirements of the following tests. Each test is provided within a list, and in this case, I'll run two tests. First, I'll enforce that the key set is key set, which is what we bound to the variable up here. And next, I'll enforce that the key set is the admin key set. If both of these fail, the message access denied will be returned to the user because they don't have access to get the balance. If either of these pass, the function will continue to the next step, where we'll return the balance. And we can do that here. To return the balance, just type balance. You've now finished the get balance function and are ready to add one last piece of functionality to your smart contract. Next, you'll create the function that allows one account to pay another. I'll do that using a function named pay. Important things to keep in mind for this function are that we need to manage the balance of multiple users. There will be an account that is sending value, we'll call from, and an account they're sending it to, which we'll call to. Also, there's an amount being sent, which will be another parameter for the function. Using these, we'll read the current balances of each account, bind these values to variables, enforce that the users have the correct authorizations, and that the amounts in the transaction are valid. Finally, we'll update the balances of each user and return some important information to the users. With that in mind, let's write the pay function. To get started, define a function named pay that takes parameters from, to, and amount, like this. Next, use with read to view the payments table of the account from. Bind the balance and key set of this account to from balance and key set. I'll do that like this. With read the payments table from, and I have balance and key set bound to variables from bal and key set. At this point, you'll enforce that the key set is the key set of the account so that only the owner of the account has the authorization to send value. That's done using enforce key set followed by the variable key set that we just bound here. I'll follow a similar pattern for the to account. I'll use with read to view the balance of the receiving account named to, and then I'll bind the balance to a variable named to bal. Now, I'll add in a few checks to make sure the amount being sent follows a few important rules. First, that the amount sent is greater than zero, and second, that the amount sent is less than the total amount in the sender's account. So first, check that the amount is greater than zero using enforce, followed by an amount greater than zero, and if not, return a message that the transaction amount is negative. If this happens, you won't be executing the transaction. Next, enforce that the balance of the user transferring value is greater than the amount transferred. Do this using enforce greater than or equal to the value of the from balance, and if not, return a message that the sender has insufficient funds. This again would stop the transaction from happening. Okay, so now you've enforced that the transaction is valid. 
it's time to update the table to reflect the changes made by the transfer. You'll update the payments table for both the from and to accounts. First, update the payments table to reflect the new balance of the from account. Use update on the payments table at the variable from and subtract the amount from the from balance. At this point, the from balance is accurately reflected on the table. Let's do the same with the to balance. So, next, update the payments table at the variable to to reflect the new balance of the to balance account. Use update on the payments table to and add the amount to the to balance. Great, so now the table is updated to reflect the transaction for both the from balance and the to balance. The last thing to do is return a message that confirms the completed transaction. Return a formatted string to say that the from account has paid the to account the amount paid. I'll use format along with the from, to, and amount in the postfix. You can return any message, but I'll return that from paid to followed by the amount. And that finishes the pay function. That was a long one, but we finished the function that allows users to make payments to each other. To recap, what we did was read the balance of the two accounts taking place in the transaction, then update their balance depending on the value being transferred. Other things we took care of were enforcing authorizations, and we provided some comments to the users depending on the outcome of the transfer. At this point, if you've been following along, you now completed the module. Great work. To finish this up, we'll write up the table creation and a few function calls to test the functionality of the module. Below the module, we'll create the table that we defined within the module. We can do that by writing create table, payments table. The next step is to call some functions from within the module to create accounts that we'll use to transfer value. For this tutorial, we'll create two accounts, Sarah and James. You can do this using the create account function you built within the module. This function takes three arguments, ID, initial balance, and key set. First, I'll create an account for Sarah with an initial value of 100.25. As an input to the parameter key set, we'll read a key set named Sarah key set that we'll create shortly from within the online editor. Next, we'll do the same thing, but for James's account. Create an account named James and assign it a value of 250. We'll again read a key set named James's key set that we'll create shortly. So we've called the functions needed to create accounts for Sarah and James. The final step is to make a payment from one account to the other. You can do this using the pay function you created within the module. Use the pay function to transfer a value of 25 to James from Sarah's account. Here, we'll use the pay function to transfer an amount of 25 to James's account from Sarah's account. After making the payment, we'll read the balance of both Sarah and James. Like before, you can return a message however you'd like, but I'll use format to say Sarah's balance is and equal to getting the balance of Sarah. Similarly, I'll read James's balance using get balance and return a message that states James's new balance. So at this point, you've written all the code we'll be writing throughout this tutorial. Now that the smart contract is complete, you can paste it into the online editor to both run and deploy it. I'll go through each step, but I'll go through quickly since this is all also covered in other tutorials. I just want to make sure you're able to get up and running with this smart contract. To start, copy the code you wrote locally and paste it into the editor at pact.kadana.io. From here, I'll make a few updates that you need to deploy the smart contract. Remember, to deploy any smart contract, you need both a unique module name and admin key set name. I'll update payments to payments tutorial and I'll update the admin key set to admin key set tutorial. From there, be sure to update the admin key set name everywhere that it exists in the code. Next, I need to create the keys and key sets. I'll make each of the three key sets we included in our code, admin key set tutorial, Sarah key set, and James key set. Then I'll make a key for each key set and assign each key set its key. I'll make admin key tutorial, James key, and Sarah key. After doing that, I'll check each box to assign the keys to their key sets. You're now ready to deploy the smart contract. Click deploy and choose a target. Go to sign and sign with each key by selecting the checkboxes. 
Now select deploy and you should see a message appear that James's balance is 275. If you get any errors, try following the messages to debug the code or try pasting in the code from the final folder if you can't get it sorted out. At this point, you've built and deployed the payment smart contract. Great work. If you'd like, you can go find this in the module explorer, call its functions, or use this code to begin working on a brand new project. And that wraps up this tutorial. Throughout this tutorial, you built a smart contract that allows users to create accounts, view account balances, and make payments between accounts. This is an important function of smart contracts and will set you up to create more complex applications using accounts and transfers. So take some time to experiment with these new ideas, and when you're ready, I'll see you in the next tutorial.